To say that Bret Hart was annoyed at Hulk Hogan for the WrestleMania 9 fiasco would be a huge understatement. The hitman felt he was ushering in a new era in the World Wrestling Federation in late 1992, where the top guys didn't have to be over the top cartoon characters, but instead the top guys would be the superstars who put on the best matches night in and night out. Fans too welcomed this change. The WWF had dwindled in popularity in the United States in the early 90s, yet guys like Brad Hart, smaller guys, had been carrying the company forward with solid in-ring performances that kept loyal WWF fans entertained. A lot of pressure was put on the more athletic guys of the WWF to provide entertaining shows when guys like Hulk Hogan and The Ultimate Warrior were no longer around, but certain guys, in particular Brad Hart, thrived on the challenge and took pride in giving us matches that the main eventers of the past simply couldn't do. So imagine how Brad felt when Hulk Hogan returned to the WWF seemingly out of nowhere only to get rewarded with Brett's WWF Championship at WrestleMania 9 after the Hitman and others had done so much work in moving the WWF away from the same old stuff that we saw in the 80s. Remembering how he felt after his WrestleMania 9 match, Brett wrote in his book. I was really thinking, go ahead Hogan, take from me what I worked so hard to get. We'll see just how long you last. Hogan was champion again without even having a match and before I'd even made it backstage. I could hear the one, two, three, the roar of the crowd and Hogan's music thumping. I couldn't help but stare at the TV monitor watching Hogan work the crowd with the same old posing routine, a hand behind the ear, shaking the word belt in the air as if to say it belonged to him all along. A few minutes later, Hogan came up to me excited and happy and said, thank you brother, I won't forget it, I'll be happy to return the favour. I looked my old friend in the eye and said, I'm going to remember that Terry. The next WWF pay-per-view after WrestleMania 9 was the King of the Ring, and Vince McMahon told Bret Hart that the Hitman was going to win the whole tournament, the first King of the Ring to make it onto pay-per-view. Bret thought he was winning the tournament in order to set up a Hogan vs Hart match at SummerSlam, and Bret even said that promotional pictures were taken of Bret and Hulk having a stare down with the World Wrestling Federation title at the forefront, probably for the SummerSlam 93 poster and video cover. Ten days after this photo shoot, Vince McMahon told Bret Hart that Hogan was refusing to put Bret over, and Hogan had reportedly said that Bret wasn't in his league. Again, this is from Bret's book. Vince had decided that Yoko would be getting the belt instead. I couldn't believe that Hogan would do this to me. I remembered him shaking my hand at WrestleMania 9 and telling me he'd be happy to return the favour. Vince said he'd have one more meeting with Hogan to try to sell him on it, but if he didn't go for it, I'd be working with Jerry Lawler at SummerSlam instead. Hogan didn't go for it. I wanted to believe that Vince hadn't told me the whole story and I made up my mind to confront Hogan as soon as he dropped the belt to Yoko. I'd wait till then because it didn't seem right for me to change Yoko's destiny. Yokozuna was booked to win the title back at the King of the Ring show while Bret would still win the King of the Ring tournament as planned. Bret said that, because of the whole Hogan business, that he was determined not only to have the three best matches on the pay-per-view, but three of the best matches of his entire career. Pat Patterson, for whatever reason, told Bret that he could not win any of his matches with the sharpshooter. It's never been explained why, so the hitman would have to finish each match in unique ways that would still get pops from the audience. What we're going to do here is look at every match and see how the hitman pulled this off. Every match here was very different from the other and when you consider how pissed off Brett truly was thanks to Hulk Hogan and when you consider Brett's motivations throughout this pay per view, it just makes the whole night and the whole performance much more intriguing to watch. We know that Hart can sometimes take things a little too seriously, but this is an example of that trait getting applied to his work in the ring. Brett had something to prove on this night and what's more, he totally Totally pulled it off. 
Here you can see the brackets for the 1993 King of the Ring, and what you may notice here is that Brett really couldn't have had three better opponents on this evening. In my opinion anyway, I wouldn't have chosen Brett to go up against anyone else other than Razor Ramon, Mr. Perfect and Bam Bam Bigelow, especially in 1993. The pay-per-view, which was held on the 13th of June, opens up with Hart vs Ramon, a rematch from the 1993 Royal Rumble. When speaking of this match in his book, Brett praised Razor Ramon, saying that Razor had improved significantly over the course of a few months, and the Hitman believes that this King of the Ring match was much better than the 1993 Royal Rumble title match. This bout took place right in the middle of Ramon's storyline with the 1-2-3 kid. Remember, the kid had gotten a big upset win over the bad guy, and that's why Razor looks a little pissed off at the audience. They were all chanting 1-2-3. The two men lock up, but neither superstar gets the upper hand. Razor's looking pretty confident, but Brett catches Ramon with a standing side headlock before the bad guy gets taken down. The hitman keeps the pressure on with an armbar, but the bad guy shoots Brett off the ropes, and Brett ends up taking a big clothesline when Ramon doesn't budge for a hip toss attempt. Something to note here is that the crowd popped when Razor took the hitman down. Turning Ramon into a babyface around this time period was absolutely the right thing to do, as fans wanted to cheer for the bad guy. Razor misses an elbow drop and Brett catches Ramon with an arm drag takeover, again applying pressure to the arm. Razor gets up, the hole gets broken, but again, Brett goes straight back to an arm drag takeover followed by an arm bar. So far, the hitman has been very methodical during this match and he's been outsmarting Ramon with counter moves. A nice little spot follows where Ramon scoops Brett up while the arm is still locked but Brett follows through with another takedown. Brett then delivers some strikes, but Razor gives Hart a thumb to the eye, momentarily giving the bad guy the advantage. Brett continues to keep his wits about him, countering a reverse chin lock with a hammer lock, and as you can probably tell, this one has been all about Brett's ability to counter and mat wrestle. It's truly some phenomenal work here. Razor gets to the corner, but he cheap shots Brett with an elbow. This allows the bad guy to finally go on offense, and the hitman gets drilled into the ring post. Ramon attacks Brett on the outside, and back inside the ropes, the fans start chanting 1, 2, 3 as Razor lays in a few kicks. Ramon then stomps on Brett's fingers before lifting hard up for a fallaway slam. And then Razor takes a page out of Davy Boy Smith's playbook with a running power slam. It only gets a two count. Brett's now in a bad way as Razor continues to kick the hitman while he's down. A sidewalk slam from Razor follows, but Hart is then able to dodge the bad guy's elbow drops by rolling out of the way. I'll admit that this right here does nothing for me, and I always found spots like this a little silly. Hart stands up and Razor takes a few punches. An inverted atomic drop and a jumping clothesline from Hart only scores a two count. A side Russian leg sweep from the excellence of execution follows along with a backbreaker, but again, Razor is able to kick out. Ramon is able to counter a bulldog by launching Brett chest first into the turnbuckles, and Razor then signals for the Razor's edge, feeling that Hart's been beaten down long enough. Brett gets lifted up in the air, but he manages to get out of the finisher, beginning a backslide attempt that ends with the hitman rolling over Ramon for a small package attempt. It's extremely close, but Ramon kicks out at two, so close that Brett argues with the referee. Razor takes advantage while Brett's back's turned. The bad guy then sets Brett up on the top rope for a side suplex, but Brett counters it in midair, crashing down on the bad guy in a pinning predicament that scores Brett the victory. Razor is livid, but in reality, both men had to be pleased with this one. A great opening match here, and when you remember that this took place in 1993, it makes it stand out a hell of a lot more. Mr. Perfect Kurt Hennig qualified for the King of the Ring next when he defeated Mr. Hughes, thank god for that, so fans immediately got excited for the big SummerSlam 1991 rematch. 
During the Hughes vs Hennig bout, Bret Hart had an interview where he said he'd prefer to face Mr Perfect in the semi-finals because he had more respect for Kurt Hennig. And those very words would get used against the hitman during an interview with Mean Gene Okerlund. Okerlund completely stirs the pot here, trying to say that Bret wanted to face Kurt because Bret implied that Mr Perfect would be an easier opponent. And even though the hitman tries to explain himself, Mr Perfect is not buying it for a single moment. Mean Gene gets a little order after starting this whole argument but he stirs the pot again by saying that both Brad and Perfect are second generation wrestlers. Mean Gene wants to know if Stu Hart ever faced Larry the Axe Hennig and Brett says yes Stu Hart beat Larry the Axe. Perfect says that Brett's dad never beat Kurt's dad and just to confirm by the way Larry did spend a week or so in Stampede in February of 1961 but Stu and Larry actually never wrestled each other. Perfect says he remembers SummerSlam 1991 and Mr. Perfect owes Brett a beating. Brett says he remembers SummerSlam too and he remembers beating Perfect in the middle of the ring. The two men continue to argue until Perfect puts his hand out, asking for a handshake while saying may the best man win. But Kurt moves his hand away afterwards, causing Brett to leave the interview and make his way down to the ring. So here we go, Perfect vs Hart one more time on WWF pay per view. A lot of fans feel that this one is actually better than the SummerSlam 1991 encounter, so let's see what happens and I'll give my own opinion at the end of the match. Brett's fingers have been taped up, remember Razor Ramon stumped on the hitman's hands during the opening match, so it looks like Brett may be at a disadvantage here. The first lockup leads to both men making a clean break, but Perfect catches Brett with a waist lock on the second attempt, resulting in Brett having to grab the ropes to force a break. A side headlock from Brett results in Perfect taking the spinning bump again after a hip toss, but instead of going out of the ring, Hennig walks into a headlock takedown but he counters with a head scissors. Brett dives at Perfect with another side headlock counter and there's no clean break this time. Perfect delivers a hard knife edge chop in the corner and this gets followed up with the same body slam and counter sequence that we saw at SummerSlam, ending again with Brett hitting another headlock takedown. A crucifix pin only scores Brett a two count, the side headlock is again applied and Perfect needs to come up with another strategy here. The hitman has simply out wrestled Kurt since the opening bell. A crossbody from Brett only gets a one count and Hart briefly ends up on the outside of the ring. Brett comes back in with a sunset flip and after Perfect kicks out, Brett goes straight back to what's been working for him, the headlock takedown. There's a huge difference in doing the same move over and over again because you don't know what to do and doing the same move over and over because it's effective and the side headlock has been extremely effective at keeping Kurt Hennig down to the mat. There's actually context for the move here. Kurt manages to bring Brett to the ropes for a break. A knee to the midsection gives Perfect an opening and Perfect hits a standing drop kick that knocks the hitman out of the ring. We think Perfect is being a good sportsman by holding the ropes open for Brett, but Mr. Perfect attacks the hitman and Kurt Hennig starts getting a little more aggressive. We see another spot from the SummerSlam match when Perfect doesn't let Brett back into the ring. The hitman gets launched into the guardrail only this time the bump looks a lot more painful. Brett begins favouring the knee after taking the bump but Perfect isn't letting up. A drop kick from the top rope only gets Perfect a two count but the beating continues. Hard takes the chest first turnbuckle bump pretty hard but Perfect follows up with a top rope move that gets countered. Brett hits a superplex and the crowd goes nuts and Brett then begins getting a little more vicious while targeting the legs. Just look at these bumps that Kurt's taking here, it's absolutely fantastic work. The figure 4 gets applied but Perfect won't give up. Hennig stays in the hold for an extended period of time but he eventually makes it to the ropes. Brett keeps the pressure on the legs, Perfect gets out of a leg lock and Brett gets thrown across the ring by the hair. Perfect is now limping in the ring and the commentary team of Jim Ross, Bobby Heenan and Randy Savage are doing a great job of putting this bout over. The crowd too are completely glued to the matchup. 
Perfect applies a sleeper hold and Kurt remembers to sell the bad leg when he has to break the hold. Hennig then begins cheating when he applies another sleeper. Brett is able to break the hold by running Kurt into the turnbuckles. And then Brett hits a thunderous European uppercut that knocks Perfect straight down to the mat. One of the best uppercuts you'll ever see in wrestling. Here, have a listen. Oh, what a lifter! Perfect then takes the ring post of the crotch bump and Brett hits an inverted atomic drop followed by a Russian leg sweep. A backbreaker comes before Brett's signature elbow drop and then Brett goes for the sharpshooter. Hennig remembers that Brett has an injured hand and Perfect gets out of the sharpshooter by going after Hart's fingers. Kurt goes for the Perfect Plex but Brett counters resulting in both men tumbling out of the ring. Both men get back inside the ropes, Perfect is on one knee, but Kurt surprises Brett with an inside cradle. Brett then counters the move, resulting in Perfect getting pinned and Hart winning the match. I simply can't say enough good things about this bout. I'd forgotten how good this was until I watched it again for making this video, but really, I can't choose a favourite. The stakes felt a little higher at SummerSlam, but I'll also say that the King of the Ring match was a little more polished. Honestly, right at this moment, I'd say that the King of the Ring match was marginally better, but ask me again next month and I'll maybe change my mind. Both contests were really good though, you can't go wrong with either. Hennig and Hart finally shake hands at the end of the bout, showing a mutual respect for one another as Brett goes on to face Bam Bam Bigelow in the finals. Bigelow had gotten a bye into the finals thanks to the Luger vs Tatanka match having no decisive winner, so the Hitman had a bad knee and a bad hand going into the King of the Ring finals, whereas Bigelow was a lot more fresh. Before going to the ring though, Brett had a little business to deal with backstage. The Hitman would confront Hulk Hogan before the Bam Bam Bigelow match. Hulk Hogan dropped the WWF title to Yokozuna right after the Hart vs Perfect match. Brett wrote in his book that he approached Hogan afterwards, still upset that the Hulkster refused to put Brett over for the WWF title. The following is from Brett's book. Once Hogan got back to his dressing room, I knocked on the door and stepped in. Jimmy Hart, Dave Hebner and Beefcake were with him. I said, Terry, I want to speak with you. We stared at each other. You told me at WrestleMania 9 that you'd be happy to return the favour, and as I understand it, now you don't even want to work with me. You won't put me over and I'm not in your league. Hogan stood there speechless, so I carried on. Well, you're right, you're not in my league. On behalf of myself, my family and most of the boys in the dressing room, you can go f yourself. He stuttered, brother, you don't know the whole story. I got the story directly from Vince, I said. Terry, you haven't said 10 words to me since you got back almost 4 months ago. If you want to level with me, then go ahead, I'm right here. I can't. Why not? Because you just told me to go f myself. That's right, and I'll tell you again, go f yourself. I turned and walked out, heading straight for the ring to wrestle Bam Bam for the main event finale of the tournament. Bret Hart went into the finals of the 1993 King of the Ring beaten and sore. The first match was all about the ground game and how Bret could mat wrestle. The second match was more about how versatile Bret could be, wrestling a much more smart and aggressive match. And now Bret had to survive Bam Bam Bigelow, a guy that has been called the greatest big guy in the business by a lot of his peers. Bret was injured, he had a bad leg and his fingers were stomped on. So this was going to be a real test for the hitman. Brett's strategy was exposed right at the opening bell. Move fast, get out of the way and counter everything that Bam Bam does. The problem here though is evident by the first few moments of the match is that Bam Bam was an extremely powerful guy who could overcome Brett's offense pretty easily. Brett uses technique to counter Bigelow's strength. A press slam gets countered by the hitman and Brett keeps a wrist lock applied while punching his opponent, though a big shoulder block keeps Brett at bay. Bigelow goes for another press 
slam, only this time Brett gets dumped right out of the ring. The commentators say it's over and it sure does look that way. Bam Bam is just going to be too much here for the excellence of execution. Bigelow breaks the 10 count by throwing Brett back into the ring. A few headbutts get delivered and Brett takes a hard Irish whip into the corner. It's a slow and systematic beating here. It's easy to forget Brett had already wrestled for close to 30 minutes when you see the hitman taking moves like this massive side suplex. Brett tries to go toe to toe with Bam Bam but the hitman takes another hard Irish whip to the corner. It's just a matter of time before Hart loses this one and Bigelow becomes the 1993 king of the ring. Randy Savage argues that Bigelow is maybe wasting too much time here. Brett keeps kicking out, but at the same time, Bigelow isn't showing much urgency. A bear hug gets applied next. Heenan reminds us that Razor damaged Brett's hand, Perfect damaged Hart's leg, and now Bam Bam is taking out the hitman's back. A ridiculously high angle back suplex gets delivered before Brett gets thrown out of the ring. On the outside though, Brett creates an opportunity for himself when he throws Bigelow into the guardrail. From here, Brett uses the guardrail to his advantage and the referee lets it slide. Brett has weakened the beast from the east but the match is far from over. Brett gets a little too confident and Bam Bam grabs the hitman in midair. Brett then gets drilled into the ring post and Bam Bam follows up with a body slam to the floor. With the referee distracted in the ring, Luna Vachon makes an appearance and she hits Brett with a steel chair. Gotta admit here, it was an extremely weak chair shot, but still, Brett again is at a serious disadvantage. Brett gets thrown into the ring and the hitman takes a body slam. Bam Bam goes to the top rope, we see the diving headbutt, and Bam Bam Bigelow wins the match. One, two, three, Brett gets pinned and Bigelow is the 1993 king of the ring. Senior referee Art Hebner comes down to the ring and he explains what Luna Vachon just did, and it's decided that the match will continue. Strangely, Howard Finkel got it wrong at first. The Fink said the decision has been reversed, but the referees tell Howard that the match will actually continue on. Bam Bam goes straight back on the offense and Brett gets beat so badly that he's unable to stand up unassisted. Headbutts, punches, kicks, Bigelow is now mad that the match has been restarted and Brett's the one who's gonna pay for it. Brett gets caught again in the bear hug and Bigelow then scoops Brett up for a backbreaker submission hold pulling Brett's back into Bigelow's shoulder. Brett somehow counters the move with a side suplex and the crowd pops. The hitman has one more chance it seems. Brett dodges a senton drop, but Bigelow halts Brett's momentum with a rake to the eyes. The punishment continues with another backbreaker submission hold, but Brett claws at Bigelow's face, allowing Brett to transition into a sleeper hold. Brett then drop kicks Bigelow and Bam Bam gets tossed out of the ring. Brett then hits a plancha, and back inside the ring, Bigelow takes a second rope clothesline. It's looking good now for the hitman as Brett nails a Russian leg sweep and a middle rope bulldog. Brett goes for the sharpshooter, but Bigelow just pushes Brett away. The hitman's side suplex is then reversed by Bam Bam, and Bigelow nearly crushes the hitman's face straight into the mat. This has been another excellent match, and the crowd are on the edge of their seats. The match comes to an end when Brett gets a foot up in the corner. The hitman climbs on Bigelow's shoulders and we see a victory roll. Brett is able to get the pinfall win and Brett becomes the 1993 king of the ring. An absolutely outstanding performance from Brett the Hitman Hart and if anyone ever tries to come off with the whole Brett Hart was overrated nonsense, all these people have to do is watch the 1993 king of the ring. Compare this too with Hulk Hogan's performance on the night and you can instantly see why Brett Hart felt the way he did. The pay per view ends with Brett accepting the king's crown, but Jerry Lawler comes out. The hitman takes a beating, and this was all done to set up Lawler vs. Hart at SummerSlam. Definitely not the Hart vs. Hogan match that Brett had hoped for. Quick side note Brett said that Jerry really hurt Brett during this attack, and the hitman would remember it too, promising to give the king a receipt in their future matchup. 
In Brett's book, the hitman said he went backstage after the pay-per-view went off the air and Vince McMahon gave him a hard time for confronting Hogan. The next night, the three men had a meeting. Brett said, the next day I was so sore that I could barely drive to the building in Columbus for TVs. As I hobbled in, Hogan came straight to me. He motioned with his big finger, come here. I stared at him and he softened and asked me, can I have a word with you? I nodded and off we went for a walk. Terry told me that yes, I was supposed to win back the belt, but that when Vince changed our contest at SummerSlam to a non-title match, he no longer wanted to do the match with me. But I clearly remembered the photo shoot we'd done with the belt and that Vince had told me I'd beat Hulk with the sharpshooter. I knew what I'd been told and I stood firm. Vince said that you said I wasn't good enough for you to even consider putting me over and that I wasn't in your league. That's just not true, brother. With a mad look in his eye, Terry tugged me by the sleeve towards Vince's office and barged right in. I didn't mind, I wanted to know which one of my supposed friends were lying to me. Vince directed pleading eyes at me, and then when Hogan retold his version, Vince coolly lied to my face. I never ever said it would be a title match. I realized that there was some kind of head game going on between Vince and Hogan, and I was merely a pawn to be played with and discarded. When Hogan left the office, he had tears in his eyes. It would be a long time before I'd see him again. He finished up a few days later, and most of the boys suspected he'd be back just in time to score the main event spot with Yokozuna at SummerSlam. Either way, it wouldn't be me. I had Lawler whether I liked it or not. Vince McMahon would try to build a new American hero in Lex Luger in 1993 as a sort of replacement for Hulk Hogan, but that didn't go down too well. Who would end up back on top as the face of the WWF? It was Bret Hart, and this wouldn't be the last time Bret would end up winning the title when Vince's experiments went completely wrong, but those are stories for another time. Bret Hart fans know how good the 1993 King of the Ring was, and if you've never watched it, it comes highly recommended. I hope you enjoyed this video, thank you for watching, and take care.